Hello, Paul Wilkinson here. This is a video about Ray Fong Williams. It's the 150th anniversary of Vaughan Williams and there's lots of things going on on by the Vaughan Williams Society and the Trust and also on Radio 3 and Classic FM. And I thought it'd be nice to talk about it from my perspective. Vaughan Williams' music has played a big part in my life. So I thought it'd be nice to just share that with you a little bit. First of all, I remember being about 10 or 11 and if you're from the UK you might remember this WH Smith's the uh, magazine shop essentially bookshop and things used to sell tapes so I used to go with my dad and we would buy like Handel's Messiah and I think you know various other Beethoven symphonies and Mendelssohn and all those kind of things and I think it's there I first heard um, a tape version of The Lark Ascending and then maybe Fantasy on a Theme by Thomas Tallis. I've got so many of these scores which I've had my head in over the years to try and study what to, how Bob Williams gets this amazing sound that he does from the orchestra. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment or two. Um, so yeah I used to get those tapes and then it wasn't until sort of late teens early 20s that I studied with a, um, a musician who came a, became a great friend called William King on a very fine composer himself very wonderful jazz pianist as well and Bill um, Uncle Bill, as he used to like to be referred to, uh, he, used, he really fostered the love of the British composer. So he really reconnected me with Vaughan Williams. Um, so we explored that together and he would talk about favourite recordings. So here's one of the box set of the Nine Symphonies, for example. I used to go back in the day, I don't know if they still do it now, but HMV, uh, the record store here in the UK, used to do some um, CDs. So this is a C symphony, a great symphony by Vaughan Williams. I have a few of those here. Uh, the record label Naxos actually has symphony number five and number nine. They do a wonderful uh, collection and I'm sure they still do and they still foster that to this day. Um, so yeah, Vaughan Williams played a big part in my life and um, I listen to his music a lot. There's certain symphonies I'm attracted to, although they're all very, very wonderful. But before, before we talk about that, let's keep this as brief as we can because I want to point you in some places maybe if you're not familiar with Vaughan Williams music because we have nine symphonies there's five operas um, there's a lot of music there uh, so here's a little book from Oxford Music for piano and in, in here is a collection of piano pieces um, there's, there's a few other pieces like uh, a piece called uh, The Lake in the Mountains which is a stunning piece but in here that's not in this book but in here is a collection of some lovely pieces and here's a little bit from the first one just a beautiful piece it's been in and out of the piano exams I can't remember if it's grade four or five I forget years ago but people were very attracted to that piece so that's a lovely little book of piano pieces not many piano pieces from Vaughan Williams so if you want to get in and uh, have a look at that I heartily recommend that book uh, other things uh, to talk about I suppose the fifth symphony to many people particularly British composers some people regard it as the, the great British symphony along with Edward Elgar's one, uh, William Walton's one. So, and, and I think the Romanza in here has been voted, uh, I forget, on the Classic FM website as like the most popular piece of music, uh, classical music. I have done, if you want to dive in deeper, there's a video link and I'll put it down below and at the end of this video for a much more detailed analysis of the Fifth Symphony. So if you want to geek out and find out more about it, I've done a video a number of years ago analysing the first movement of this symphony. These amazing pieces, yeah, serenade to music, wonderful piece. The, uh, the, uh, I love this, look how worn it is. This is the, um, the sixth symphony. I have all the symphonies. Because what I used to do, and still do to this day, is sometimes go to these second-hand bookshops and you find these symphonies. And there used to be, I don't know if it's still there now, I don't think it is in York, there was a second-hand music shop. And you could go in there and buy sheet music. And I used to ring my friends up and say I was there and they'd tell me, I'd get requests, if you can find this score, I'd like this orchestra score. If you can find this score, I'd like this one. So there's where I picked up a number of these uh, symphonies. 
And just before we finish, the Paschal Symphony, the third symphony, I think we're celebrating 100 years of that being performed. So if Vaughan Williams is not in your life, please go investigate. And if you're a walker and you visit this beautiful landscape, particularly up here in Yorkshire and, and all over England, of course, you will you will you will see this music in the landscape. It's uh, Vaughan Williams intuited it. You know, it was a, it wasn't dualistic almost. It just came in and out. So Vaughan Williams' music is is so rich. My old teacher Bill used to write to him when he was a boy, and he'd write back to him. How wonderful! And, Bill shared that love of the, this music with me. So I'm sharing it with you. So if you're not familiar with Vaughan Williams's, go check out the symphonies, uh, the third, the fifth, I love the sixth, the C symphony, the, the, the symphony Antarctic. All these works are well worth investigating. They're absolutely fabulous. So dive in and enjoy the work of Ray Vaughan Williams. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.